Today's Share the Plate recipient is the Clyde Malone Center here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And I'm pleased to welcome John Goodwin, their executive director with us. Thanks for having me, Jane. I, I really appreciate this opportunity to be in front of you all and, and to share a little bit about what we're doing. Again, I am John Goodwin, the executive director. I've been in this role since 2019. Let's, let's, let's start with our preschool. We, ha we have a preschool of our early education to where we partner with the University of Nebraska, Ruth Staples. And so our preschool has grown from four to 15 kids. We now have three teachers. And again, we're trying to prepare them for kindergarten. And this is the best way to do that is through our preschool. Uh, we have an out of school program where we pick up from 12 to 13 different schools here in the city. We bring to our facility and we work programming. And those programs are, um, there's a lot of programs that's involved with that. Some of it is fitness and gardening and uh, self-love and art. Uh, we've done robotics. We're, we're trying to introduce uh, electronics and, and, and aviation also to our, to our kids that are here. Our goal is to create a different experience for them so they can have more successful outcomes. And we do that through these programs. We also have an out-of-school program. Um, and that's not all of our programs that we offer in our, in our out-of-school program, after-school program, but just a little bit there. We also have an out-of-school program at Color Middle School, which is our CLC program, which offers those same, same type of opportunities for our kids there as well. Uh, we, from there, we go into our high school programs. In our high school programs, we have a young men, young women's leadership program where we're teaching our teens how to, uh, to own their own business, be entrepreneurs. Um, so we get them into uh, uh, events. We, we, we take them different colleges down south where they can see, uh, they can see uh, African-Americans owning their own business to encourage them and to give them more insight on that, that has been very successful uh, in that program. We also have a take pause program where we are uh, working with our police department, educating both sides. We call it take pause because we want both sides to take pause of, of doing something that they will probably regret later. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with that, you may see some of our kids and the police out planting trees together, out eating together, bowling together, doing different activities, going to the movies together to build more relationship and understanding. Um, we also have a uh, whole cops accountable, which we work very closely with our police department um, and uh, the five subcommittees that, that has come from the whole cops accountable to where we're meeting uh, twice a month. And then uh, at the end of the month, the last Thursday of the month, we're meeting uh, as a community and the police will come in into our center and we would uh, get questions answered. They'll tell us the updates, you know, they just keep us informed and to open up, uh, keep an open dialogue with the community and with the police that has been going on, uh, that has been happening very well. That's, that started last year uh, in June of July and has been still going strong today. And we've been seeing positive uh, uh, results from that and, and, and impact, positive impact in our community. Uh, we also have um, a maternal wellness program, which is now in Omaha too. Omaha heard about our program and Omaha does not offer anything that we have, that they have up there. So they decided to call out and see if we would come up there to North Omaha. And that's basically teaching uh, our young women and our single moms or even moms period that, that, are, that are pregnant uh, before, so before, during and after birth, just educating them on um, their pregnancy, uh, breastfeeding awareness, how important it is for breastfeeding for them and also for the child. So we offer birthing classes, pregnancy and childbirth doulas. We've added those um, to support our, our families as well, uh, pre, post, and during, during those times of pregnancy, we feel that's very important. Uh, and that has been a blessing uh, for us as, as the center. In fact, that program grew through the pandemic. Um, also the out of school program grew through the pandemic. And so we're excited about that. We also, we address mental health. This is the first time that Malone has really addressed mental health in our community and our center. And so we are working, we have a licensed therapist come in four or five times a week and work with our kids uh, individually and in groups and some of our families uh, to address the needs of, of the mental health and how can we uh, assist in a positive way and to make sure, again, they have a, a positive impact in their lives moving forward. 
and, and dealing with those issues that need to be dealt with. Uh, a maternal health initiative that we have that we are educating our community as well, our elderly uh, and high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, obesity. We are addressing those issues to see how can we, um, again, offer something different to where we can get better results. Mm -hmm. um, and to educate them on what, what they can eat, what they can have, what not telling them, hey, you do this, you get off your medications. That's not what we're doing. But what we're doing is trying to just educate them on the why and, and how can you better yourself as exercise? Is it not eating red meat? I don't know what that all may take place, but it, we're encouraging them to eat better and to exercise and to take, take more focus on their bodies um, so they can feel better and, and about themselves and to do more in the community. If that's just, they may not be able to run a treadmill, but if they can just walk a block, if they can walk a half a block, we're starting something. So again, our goal and our, and our vision here at the Malone is to create unity and prosperity throughout Lincoln while honoring our African-American heritage. And we do those through our programs. We do those through the things that we offer. We believe that once we can change the experience or offer a different experience, their behavior, their thinking would change, their behaviors would change, and we will have more positive, impactful outcomes. And so that's, that's where we, we're, we're, we're focusing on. We focus more on our youth. And then we move on to the adults. Uh, based on that maternal wellness program, we found out that a lot of the dads were coming in with the moms, um, supporting them uh, with breastfeeding and supporting them with those birthing classes. And so because of that, we introduced and created a uh, men of standards program. And what that is, is that we are now uh, engaging into our, our young men and our men from, from 14 to 25, uh, and we're, we're talking about issues. We're talking about how to be a man. What, what, does, what does that mean? Uh, how can we be successful? How can we invest? Do you know how to invest? Do you know those different things? We're trying to build our men up in the community as well. So while, while the moms are getting what they need, the dads are getting what they need. And we're hoping that with those experiences that they come together and be more successful as a family, not just for them, but for generations and for generations and for generations. Um, that's a little bit about some of the programs that we offer. We do have an athletic side of it to where we are, where we have three, four uh, football teams that, that compete around the state uh, from here to Omaha, some, some council bluffs, and they do some tournaments in Kansas city as well. We have basketball that we, uh, that, that we started this year to where uh, last year into this year to where we taking some of the high school kids and some of the elementary kids, and we are bringing them together and competing across not just the state, but outside the state. Uh, just again, offering different experiences. And through the sports programs, we, we have a track program that is starting in November. Uh, and we're trying to introduce golf and baseball as well. Through these sports programs, we are hoping that we can draw them in with our sports. And again, bring that educational piece on the back end. Uh, the technology piece, we want to introduce uh, these kids and the people that we are serving into technology. And so a lot of our partnerships or some of our partnerships that we have right now are, are with Duncan Aviation and where we're trying to, um, again, show them that, hey, you can be a pilot, you can be a mechanic, you can't, you know, get them involved in different things other than a basketball, other than a uh, football, other than uh, some of the music that they may listen to, but try to engage because they, some of these kids don't know what they like to do and they don't know what their gifts are. So we want, again, to offer different experiences for them so we can have more successful outcomes. And so that's some of the, most of our programs that we have here to try to, again, create that unity and prosperity. Uh, our mission is to eliminate multi-generational poverty. Um, and so how we do that, again, we have to be very intentional about uh, how we are addressing the community and, and their needs. Mm -hmm. and, and again, to give them that different experience so we can have more successful outcomes. I say that a lot, but that means a whole lot because I am who I am and you are who you are based on the experiences of your life. Mm -hmm. And so we have to make sure that we take those experiences and we, we cannot change what they once experienced, but we can offer a different one so we, they can start behaving and thinking and have more successful outcomes. Thank you. 
that yeah that's a lot um, it's impressive that things have grown during the pandemic because i'm sure there have been a lot of challenges i want to stop real quick and just say that um, if you're watching this and you'd like to give a contribution to share the plate to the malone center uh, we encourage you to try text giving all you do is text uc lincoln to 73256 um, that's UC Lincoln and the amount you wish to give to 73256 and we'll put that up on the screen as well. Um, let's just keep going. I think um, I think we'll be able to um, make this work. And I wanna just again say that I'm, I'm really happy to hear that a lot of the programs were able to grow during the pandemic. I think that is a, honestly a true testament to the strength of the center and also the quality of your staff. Um, I am uh, familiar with some of them and you have some amazing staff members. And I think that is um, clearly why you've been able to continue and also to grow over the last year. I think that's amazing. I appreciate that. I really, um, I have some friends who've participated, their kids have participated in, uh, for example, the, the young men's group that you were talking about. And I'm, um, I'm really excited about that. I, I think that um, a lot of the focus um, that you talked about is really, really important. And like you said, it's it's a, an opportunity to give them um, new experiences and um, and if nothing else, to meet new people and also to see people um, that have gone on and, and started their own businesses. That's pretty amazing. And do I understand that um, that group sometimes goes to other communities in, in other states, right? They do some travel. Right. The, 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 one, one, the one story is a story that sticks out with that. that we had a, a kid from in high school who, um, who dropped out of school. And we got a little backlash for, for taking him on this trip because of most of the kids that went on this trip were still in school. They were doing really well. Um, the attendance was there. And so there was one particular kid that we, we took a chance on and, and we got a lot of back at that. Why are you taking him? He hasn't been in school. He dropped out, this and that, but we took him anyway. And so during the trip, his eyes opened up, uh, the experiences that he saw, the people that he's talked to, um, uh, I think what got him, there was a, a lady who started a cupcake business with just for $5 and now uh, she's a multimillionaire uh, with two locations, one in Atlanta and one in Tennessee. He comes back to Lincoln from that trip, decides to get his GED because he didn't have enough credits. He was a senior and he didn't just didn't have enough credits because he wasn't going to school. He goes and get his GED and he furthers his edu uh, education in the community center. He's right now in the, in, the, in the community center now in college taking classes, I believe. Um, but that happened because he experienced something different. Mm -hmm. And all these kids need is, is just an opportunity. Right. And, and, and the same with adults, as we find out with the people that we are serving, sometimes all they need is just an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know where they come from. We don't know what they have heard. We don't know what they have seen their whole life. Uh, but it, 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 if you give them an opportunity, um, you just don't know what's going to happen. And so I believe that we, we are giving these kids, these scholars an opportunity to become something great that, that's already in them. They already great. They just need to find ways and have people in their life to lead them into where they need to go and right. to give them an opportunity. And that's what you mentioned our directors and, and credit to them, they understand their purpose and they understand they why they're here. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows it's not the money. Working in a nonprofit, we know it's not the money of yeah. why they're here because, oh yeah, I'm gonna make this amount. No, that's not it. But they understand the why. Mm -hmm. And once you understand the why of why you're here and why you're doing, now you can really articulate that to the kids on their why and, 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 and allow them to start seeing something that they have never seen before. And which is, the real them mm -hmm. is them, right? When you look in the mirror, we, we use this all the time. You look in the mirror, what you see? I don't know. I see somebody broke. I see somebody. Okay, so we need to change what you're seeing in the mirror. It's almost like when you walk in here, maybe our theme song needs to be uh, Man in the Mirror by Michael Jackson. Maybe every time <laughs> we walk in, we hear Michael Jackson. But 
the stories that we have with, uh, all, with all of our families and with our kids, we give them a chance and we give them an opportunity. And some have turned them away. Some agencies may have turned the kids away, but I believe that everybody, believe, uh, everybody deserves an opportunity uh, to be great and, to, and, and for the world, because the world is waiting on the real them. It, it, the, the world is waiting on the real John Goodman. The world, they, that's what they want. They don't want nobody fake. They want somebody who is real. Who, who is the real John Goodman? You're the best John on the planet. Now get out there and do what you, your, purpose, your purpose to do. Why did God put you on this earth? You know, so, so get out there and do it. Let us show you. But you don't know until you try, until you experience something. And so yeah. that, that experience is very important um, in moving forward and, and where we're trying to go, not just as a center, but as a community and as a city and hopefully as a state. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, it sounds like, um, uh, well, so let me back up. I think a lot of the nonprofits that I've been talking to in the last um, nine, 10 months have really had to um, you know, well, work from home, but mo for the most part, but also they've had to really shift their, their offerings quite a bit. And it sounds to me like you were able to find a way around that. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, for example, about, um, I know I saw some, some photos of the haircutting, the haircuts, uh, barbers that you offered. I thought that was pretty amazing. And that seemed like maybe a new thing during the pandemic. Um, but I guess I, what I wonder is how you were able to do that. I mean, it, you had the same limitations as everyone and, and I'm sure you had to do a lot of um, special things for, you know, to protect everyone. But how were you able to continue offering things with kids um, on the same level? Did, you know, did you do, I get that. How did you work that magic? <laughs> I get that question a lot, and and we we definitely we owe. Uh, I mean, God get, God gets he, he's the ultimate source of how we allow you know got some things to happen here. Um, we followed the health department's guidelines. We did everything that we could as an agency to stay open, and we we were one of the only agencies. Not maybe a few other ones out, a couple of others out there that that did not close down. Mm -hmm. We were able to stay open. I mean, we found some technology um, to help us out just a little bit as far as our air and, and the things that they're breathing in and what it eliminates in the air and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we continue to build on uh, how, to, how to find partnerships through the pandemic. Now, uh, last year is kind of like a blur, <laughs> but it's also... Uh, it was an interesting year because you had the pandemic and then you had the, uh, you know, the George Floyd incident and then that brought a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And so I won't say we were able to capitalize on that because that's not the right word, but we were able to use a little bit of wisdom in how can we still uh, make an impact in the community uh, under the guidelines of what the health department and the state was saying. And so when you mentioned the haircuts, we, we partnered with Visionary Youth uh, here in town. We normally do it separate. That was the back to school bash. And we're having it again this year. This will be the ninth one that we have and the second one that we do it together, us and the Visionary Youth over by the College of Hair Design. And so what we do is we give away free haircuts, uh, book bags, um, shoes, so gift, gift cards to go to Shields and get shoes. We, uh, socks, underwear, utensils. Um, and then we, we made calls out to, to businesses. Uh, Brian Health was a big one to help us support uh, our families and being able to get shoes. We, uh, from Runza to, to uh, Valentino's, mm -hmm. all these places to where we can give free food and we had to individually wrap it. So we got volunteers to individually wrap the food. And, and although we didn't serve as many as we thought, I think it was, it was a little bit over 1,800 people. Wow. Normally, um, we have about 3,000 people that's coming in, getting hair, haircuts, book bags, all, the, all the, the things that they would need for school. Okay. So we just made a lot of phone calls uh, 
to, to different people in the community who are willing to say, you know what? Yeah, I want to help. Yes, I want to help. Yes, I want to help. And, and from fraternities, from the Sig Eps to the Phi Beta Sigmas to the Kappa, I mean, all of, you know, everybody just chipped in. The community was great. Uh, we were able to raise some money mm -hmm. to get turkeys during November. So we outside with a U-Haul full of frozen turkeys, giving them for, and, and baskets of stuffing and canned goods, giving them to families who, who have lost their jobs and yeah. wasn't able to, uh, weren't able to have, didn't think they'd be able to have a Thanksgiving dinner. Right. We were able to provide that food. And so we couldn't do that alone. I mean, there was, the, the, the hardest thing that I had to do was organize it one, find people to, to, and that wasn't hard to do, but to make those phone calls, but yeah. to literally send the emails out, contact hy V, contact the super savers and say, what can you do? Yeah. And so I felt like I became a professional, <laughs> a professional beggar. Like, what can you do with it? What can you, and so we just pieced it all together. There, everybody was, and it was over a thousand people that got turkeys and meals on that day. Uh, the haircuts. I mean, so it was a lot of, um, we just found it was a lot of favor. I, I will say there was favor. There's some grace there as well. Uh, but we were very intentional and aggressive mm -hmm. on making sure that our families who are, uh, that was less fortunate or were able to be able to get what they needed for the yeah. for, for kids, for school, for Thanksgiving, and also for Christmas. Yeah. So it was it's just it was just a blessing how that worked out. Um, and, Can I and, stop you and ask too for just for example, I don't know if you're doing the Thanksgiving thing again this year, but specifically for the back to school thing, is that the kind of event um, that you would then reach out to organizations or groups of people that could volunteer? Is that something that we could uh, plug yeah. into perhaps? Because I know that, um, you know, we do have a lot of folks who volunteer in the community and often they're looking for opportunities like this where it's a it's a one day or a one weekend event that they could commit to. So please keep us in mind if you're going to be doing that back to school um, uh, event back uh, in August again this year. I can definitely I can definitely send you the volunteer link. Okay. Um, after this, after this call here to where you're able to sign up to volunteer. Okay. But we take donations, we take volunteers, uh, all hands on deck for that event. We expecting over 3000 people wow. for that event. Amazing. Yeah, now that things have opened back up again and, and, and hopefully fingers crossed this, uh, this new wave isn't gonna um, be too big of an impact to, to take us back the other direction, but we're hoping that um, you know we'll be able to feel safe. A lot more people will feel safe in um, in getting back out there and, and interacting with larger groups of people. So right. I will I will uh, definitely share that with folks and put it in as a part of this uh, this uh, recording and and uh, you know when we share all church emails about it. And, and we've been working closely with the health department. So we're still going to do some of the things that we did last year. Most sure. of the things, they would still be the hand washing stations and keeping sure. everything sanitized. There would be, um, the health department would actually be there. So if they, if, and I believe given vaccinations, if, if people want them, if oh, they wow. haven't received them awesome. yet, um, we will have masks. You're going to at the same event? Program. Is that what you said? It will be all at the same. We, awesome. We, this is going to be a... <laughs> We're, this is this is back to school bash. This is yeah. the, everything that you will want. Um, and, and there will be music there. There will be a comedian there. There will be uh, live music, uh, a, a DJ there. There will be a two on, a three on three basketball tournament that's going on. There's a lot of things that's going to be going on there to just come out, have a good time. Is that um, going to be out at Trago or is it going to be within okay. the? This is going to be at the College of Hair Design. Oh, OK. okay. Um, um, that's out. Oh, across. I can't remember the name. I can't remember the street now, but we're blocked off the whole street. So about a street and a half that is blocked off. Awesome. Uh, actually two blocks to where okay. we're able to, um, do all the things that we need to do. The haircuts will be inside. Okay. Um, and the book and giving out the book bags and the shoes and underwear and stuff will be inside nice. all the food and the entertainment, uh, will be outside and some of the booths that, that will be there to um educate the community 
on whatever they need to be educated on and whatever information that's out there right now. Sure. Uh, but I know that the health department, I've asked the health department to come out and uh, be a presence there if there's people there that still uh, interested in getting the vaccine. I mean, is there, is there, that's great. Prep? I mean, so at least we are trying to cover every area as yeah. possible. Maybe by that time they'll um, be offering it to younger kids too. That would be amazing. They're not really sure when that's going to happen, but um, so let me just also um, for my, my own benefit and also for our members and friends um, just ask what I think I hear you saying is that the best way that we can help the Malone Center with the mission, uh, aside from unpacking our own uh, white supremacy, which we are doing actively right now um, and, and trying to educate ourselves on how we can um, how we can dismantle white supremacy in our country and in ourselves. Um, but aside from that, um, what I feel like I hear you saying is that the best way we can support the mission is by giving a contribution and by signing up to be on the volunteer list to be called if there are events that we can um, plug into and, and help with. Is there Are there other things that you can think of that um, just as, as an overarching question that we could do to help the mission, um, supporting events, attending events. Um, we've helped host the, you know, Mandela picnic before with uh, y'all and the and the Nebraskans for Peace group. But I, I'm trying to think if there are other things that we're missing. I mean, help and uh, uh, as far as physical help and donations, those are the big ones. Okay. Um, our events, I mean, the, the events that we we normally take part of heavily is Juneteenth and Back to School Bash. Next year, Juneteenth, we are planning on a three-day event. So a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, our hope is to have, use one of the high schools, probably Lincoln High, hopefully, um, to have a comedy gospel night uh, to kick off that Friday with a pageant, uh, uh, a beauty pageant, uh, to kick off there, like a Jabba Walk there event. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that Saturday, have, have it at the park at Trago Park mm -hmm. where there's live music, comedy, and 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 a whole bunch of other uh, booths. Everybody's out there. We almost had 4,000 people out here uh, this past month. Mm -hmm. um, and then for that, for that Sunday, have it at F Street Rec where there is more of a historical um, event to where you're learning about Juneteenth and other things that uh, black businesses and other things that they have going on there. I mean, so, and then the, the Turkey thing, we, we just partnered up with Visionary Youth and we okay. did that and it was huge. That thing was huge. We did it in our parking lot and we may be planning on doing that again along with the Christmas event uh, that we had with our families uh, in the community where we partnered with uh, the National Guard to be able to give um, uh, gifts and stuff like that for the kids uh, okay. so they can pick those up as well. Um, those are really like the major the major ones unless we're not allowing a lot of volunteers to come in inside the center right now because with the COVID and the variants and all this other stuff, so we're trying to limit the, the amount of people that come in right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have visitors, we do have some volunteers, okay. but not like it used to be. Okay. Uh, I think the the we that's why we have to have that limit of the just making sure that there's not a lot of traffic coming in and out while we have the kids here um that's one of the ways why we can how we can stay open and keep mm -hmm. them staying open is to you know try to limit that but right now that's that's basically where uh our need is is, okay. is through the volunteers and donations that that you may may give and know that um uh, if they do give a good a donation if they want the donation to go towards a, a specific program, okay. we can allocate that to and then make sure and then make sure they get an update and know where their okay. fund is being, how they're being used and stuff like oh, that. Oh, thank you. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. That's not always possible. So, so um, I feel like we've answered this, but the the um, the next big thing that's happening is the the back to school. Um, thing at the College of Harris Design. Do we have a date for that? That's August 15th. Okay. And that would be from 10 to 4. Okay. Perfect. Because this will air um, 
soon and then uh, it'll remain on our, our YouTube channel and I'll be pushing it out, promoting it, um, you know, with our own members and friends and um, make sure that people know, know what's happening. So I really, unless you have anything that you would uh, like to add, I really, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time today to talk to us and um, I really enjoyed hearing more in depth about some of the things that you've been doing this last year. Um, I, again, I think it's really amazing that you've been able to continue offering all of the programs and then even expanding them this year. Um, that's phenomenal. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking uh, the time to talk to me. I yeah. mean, that, that's, that's, I've always, you know, I'm always encouraged uh, about when people reach out and, and want to know more about what we're doing. I think that is a great feeling. I, I feel great about that. And, and you just being intentional uh, of reaching out is, is a start of how we can all in the community be able to work together and yeah. to make some, some positive things happen. 